Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at Power BI's auto date time feature. It's a very useful capability when we're exploring a data set for the first time, especially one with lots of dates. It's got a few limitations however and we'll understand what they are. To look at it we're going to use this data set. It's one that I introduced in an earlier video. Basically we've got a table of projects all those projects have a start date and an end date. Let's start off by creating a line chart of the number of projects by the end date. Let's put a line chart on the canvas. Let's add our number of projects to the values field and our end date to the axis field. And here we have a chart number of projects on every day of the three years of, of interest from the, uh, 2020 to 2022. One of the problems with this chart is that it's showing every day, one, by 1,100 days, and really what we'd like to do is to look at it by year, quarter or month. We can't do that at the moment because end date doesn't have uh, any hierarchy with it. That's what the Power BI auto date time gives us, so let's go and switch it on. To switch on, we go into File, then Options, and then we go into current file and data load and switch it on here, this auto date time intelligence. If we want to switch it on for all by default, we come up to here to global data load and we could switch it on there as well. But I'm just switching it on for this particular report. What has that done for us? Well, if we have a look at our end date now on our field list, we can see that we have got a hierarchy here that it's given us a date hierarchy with year, quarter, month and day and the end date is still there, it's got a calendar icon next to it. So that, what does that mean? That means we can come to our end date and instead of choosing the end date we can choose a date hierarchy. And then that will give us year, quarter, month, day. Maybe best to show it at the moment is a stat column chart and I'll put into focus mode and now we can drill down from the year to the quarter to the month and back to the day. Again, when we see it at the day level, it's nicer to see it as a line chart. So there we go, and we can drill up again. The drill down buttons are available. They're not anything in particular to do with the auto date time. Whenever we put a hierarchy on an axis, we'll get those drill down buttons. But the essential thing is now that we can see the data at these year, quarter, month aggregations. That's very useful. But there are a couple of limitations and maybe the best way to show that is also to create an, a new bar chart with our project cost and this time I'm going to use the start date and I'll just drill down to the quarter level and just to make that clear I'll also change that to be um, green. So what are these limitations? The first and most important one is that the hierarchy just gives us year, quarter, month and day. If we wanted to analyse by day of week, look at the project starting on a Monday rather than Friday, we can't do that because it doesn't give us that and it's not extensible. The second is that it's applying both to the end date and to the start date. We can see the same hierarchy there. So this auto date time is an all or nothing. It applies to all dates in your model or none. And sometimes we might like to just apply it to a few dates and not to others. One admittedly small limitation is that to get to the quarter level, we have to drill down a hierarchy from year to quarter. It might be nicer to have another field, which is the year quarter field, so we don't have to do that. We just have one field on our axis. Finally, we can't create a chart with a common axis and with both blue and green bars on it. Here we've got a chart at the top with the green bars showing the number of projects by the start quarter. Uh, at the bottom, the blue bars showing the number of projects by end date quarters, but those are separate charts. We can't yet put them onto one chart with a common axis and have some sort of clustered bar chart where we show both green and blue together on the same axis. In the next videos, we'll be getting around these limitations by biting the bullet, doing a bit of work up front, creating what's called a calendar table, and then applying that calendar table, connecting it up in various patterns to our data. I hope to see you on those. Thank you.